And my chapter on chapter eight here with Michael Peters on science, genealogy and openness in educational research. Um, very interesting chapter. Um, if you have read any of Michael's work or have known him or met him, you'll see he's a very dynamic individual. Um, and his ideas, um, which may seem to be fragmented or not, he has very clear methodology, um, I should say method and methodology. But what I found particularly interesting is his concept of openness. Um, I found that challenging um, and it took me a while to reflect, it took me a while after reflection and consideration and conversation with some of my colleagues that I come to a realisation about what Michael means by that use of that concept. I'm not going to ruin that for you, that's part of um, you buying this book and reading it, but um, that was certainly the title, certainly helps and leads to what he means by that with science and genealogy as part of that concept of openness. Scott, welcome. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for coming in today to talk a little bit about your chapter with uh, Richard Pring. Uh, your chapter here, chapter nine, Richard Pring on making research educational research. One or two things that you took away from your collaboration with Richard. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I had the privilege of uh, being in dialogue with Richard there. And one of the things that he's been on about for so many years is the phenomenon of education being front and centre when it comes to educational research. If we claim that our research is not specifically psychological or sociological, uh, but it's specifically educational, then what does it mean to be educated, to be an educator, and to have experiences which are indeed educational? Mm. And so Richard put a great emphasis on, upon this phenomenon, and he's argued very clearly that you know even empirical research, uh, research in the classroom, where you're looking at student results and uh, perceived impacts of certain interventions, etc., Research within those phenomena certainly requires some philosophy, mm. some philosophical mm. thinking mm. as to what makes this worthwhile, what makes this an example of, say, education rather than indoctrination. Mm. And so he looks at uh, even the concepts of teaching and learning and unpacks them a little bit more deeply mm. and say, what sorts of teaching, what sorts of learning are we putting value in terms mm. of education? And so he warns researchers not to rush in with certain tools like I'm going to be a quantitative researcher or I'm going to be a qualitative researcher. Mm. He says, well, well, hold on. First up, think about what's the exact phenomenon mm. that you want to research and what makes it uh, particularly of educational interest. Mm. And, and one of his main things that he focuses on and it comes out in the dialogue here is what it might mean to be an educated person. Not somebody who's simply informed or who mm. knows a lot of things, but what does it mean to be mm. an educated person? And this, for Richard, is one of the, the key aspects mm. Mm. In, uh, in educational research mm. for him as a philosopher. Your other chapter now with uh, Paul Smayers here on perspective on educational research. Tell us a little bit about your insights from your collaboration with Paul. Well, I think one of the wonderful things about the conversation I had with Paul was mm. that he gave this kind of overview of the of philosophy of education, really, and its place mm. within research in a, in, a, in a much broader context. So he, in some ways, he kind of situated in the context of contemporary research practices mm. in universities and the relationship with, with education and the kinds of problems which show up in education. Mm. And he's very clear that when you're doing educational research, it's often directed at a specific problem. You mm. know, your, 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 your focus in educational research is very narrow. Um, but when people are engaged in educational research, what they find is that those the kinds of problems they're trying to solve are not necessarily easily uh, tractable. Mm. Um, it's not like you can develop a scientific model of investigating that and, you know, wash your hands and say, now we have very clear responses, mm. which means that educational research inevitably raises uh, challenges to your preconceived ideas of what is education and what is research. Mm. And so Paul makes the point that that, in a sense, forces the researcher to think back on themselves, that the, re mm. the nature of the research asks you to reflect on your own, your own understanding in that Nietzschean way that, uh, mm. that philosophy uh, asks you to do some work on yourself. Mm. Mm. And I think that's his, his point, is that uh, philosophical research is that kind of practice, and that's why it's useful mm. uh, as, a, as a form of research, because it's dealing with these complex uh, mm. ideas that uh, require that kind of self-reflection. So what he's arguing for is a kind of return or a, a, you know, um, a return to an Aristotelian wisdom mm -hmm. in research. And I guess the other main just strand that went through our conversation is the realisation or uh, coming to, to terms with the fact that 
academic culture today uh, mm -hmm. is not necessarily compatible with that kind of stance. In the last chapter, John, let's talk a little bit about um, Lynn Yates' chapter on becoming a good education researcher. Okay, thanks, Dave. Yeah, so Lynn's chapter is a, a fantastic bookend to the book. Mm. So Lynn has worked through all the methodological dialogues that the, uh, that uh, constitute the the text, and she's she decided to write her chapter in support of people who were coming to education research and trying to make sense of it. Um, you know, especially those in a, in a practical way. Mm. You know, you know, and how do you engage with it? So she actually identified four themes that uh, she believes run through the methodological dialogues, and the first of those is. Uh, the issue of theory, ver you know, theoretical work w versus empirical work, mm -hmm. um, and she suggests that that's a false binary. So connecting back also to Peter Roberts' chapter, mm. you know, which uh, he raises that issue as well. So, mm. uh, yeah, so that's her first uh, um, theme through the book. The second one is that the methodological dialogues situate theory. You know, so the educational research th that's conducted um, by these. Uh, uh, you know, amazing researchers that we, we um, had the privilege of interviewing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the dialogues show how the situatedness of their work uh, is so, so important to the generation of theory through their life and mm -hmm. life stories. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, the third point that uh, Lynn would like to make is uh, about philosophy compared with theory compared with conceptual work. Mm. So that's a, a main theme she sees. And the final one are the practical matters to do with conducting educational research. Mm. So using theory in educational research in the way that she understands that. Yes.